let's put a console log in here and check it out. Yeah, this better not be on the server. <laughs> this is on the server. I have some hi boy Rich Harris at Iron and have a discussion <laughs> about that one. Okay, yeah, uh, it's not on the server. Let's scroll up. Like I said. What? Server side rendering. What you just witnessed is me fundamentally not understanding how page rendering worked in Svelkit. And today, we're going to be going over how it does work so that you never have to look like this idiot. Now let's get into it. So this right here is the demo that we're going to use to explain all of this. So first and foremost, what are we even going over here? So within our Svelkit apps, we obviously have page.svelte. Page.svelte is what gets rendered out to the end user, but where that gets rendered is more complicated than you might think. In some of my previous videos, I have mentioned that the page.svelte will run on the client, and that's not necessarily true. There is, in fact, oftentimes client-side code coming from our page.svelte, but that doesn't mean that our page.svelte itself will always be run on the client. So what do I mean by that? Well, let me explain with this SSR example. So for those of you who aren't familiar, SSR is the concept of rendering something on our server. Remember, I've hammered this home in a bajillion videos by now, but this idea of the client and the server is extremely, extremely, extremely important. The client is the end user's browser in this case, and the server is going to be Vercel or wherever we end up hosting our Svelkit app that's gonna be running all of our server-side code. So in this case, when we have SSR enabled, our page.svelte will actually be run for the first time on the server. And let me show you this example to illustrate that. Within the code of this page.svelte within our SSR directory, we have an on mount, which is gonna say, uh, where is this? Is this in the browser? And this is just a nice little variable that svelte will expose or svelte kit will expose for us, which will tell us whether or not that the current code is running in the browser. If we have to do like a check, if we wanna make sure like, hey, we can't run this fetch on SSR, or we can't run this on the client, or whatever we need to do, this is a great way to do that. So I have this on mount, which is gonna tell us, okay, where's this on mount going and where's this top level going? So when we have all this code in here, we'll go over to this part and we'll click on our SSR demo. We're gonna see two things pop up over here. We're gonna see top level, is this on the browser true? On mount, is this on the browser true? So, okay, that tracks from what I've said in the past of our, from what I've said in the past of the page.svelte is rendered on the client, this seems to track. That script tag, everything within it, that did get executed on our browser, but see the thing is there's more. So if we go back over here to our terminal, we're gonna see top level, is this the browser? And it's gonna be false. And that is because this uh, top this top level script is getting rendered on the server because this entire page is being server side rendered. So everything up here is gonna be run on the server. So if you have any code that can't run on the server, you have to make sure that it's either within an on mount or it's something that's doing like an external fetch, you put that within a load function, or you just do it like down here. So you can see right here, this top level was being executed on the server, but it was also being executed over here on the browser. So obviously in the real world, you wouldn't wanna just have code just floating out here in the void. You'd wanna put it within an on mount or have it be a function that's triggered by some event or so on and so forth. But this is still something that you could run into, and it's something that in that little clip I showed at the beginning, I was just trying to do a set interval. I was trying to set an interval to fetch to an endpoint over and over and over again. And what I did was I just did it here because at that point, I just assumed, well, it all just runs on the client. I mean, it's a script that just runs once. Why not just put a little set interval right here and call an endpoint? In this case, for the example, I have this API random, which will literally just return a random number, extremely basic stuff. So we're going right here and we're gonna go ahead and set an interval to fetch to that endpoint and then console log out that data. We'll go ahead and save this. And then if we go over here and I refresh this page, it's gonna crash. So we get this thing where it's refusing the connection here and that's because our server crashed. And the reason for this is because we can't use a relative URL fetch within a server side rendering function. We can only use that within a, uh, that can only be used within an on mount or within a load function. And the load functions go within our page.server.ts so we could export a load here or within just a page.ts. So clearly this doesn't work. Now, if we want this to work while still maintaining server side rendering, we can very, very easily fix this to just delete this code and place it within our on mount. If we place it within our on mount, remember I said that the fetch can work with an on mount. We go back over here, we refresh our page, it'll crash because I didn't turn the dev server back on. So we go ahead and we do that. 
we turn the dev server back on, refresh the page, and then now you can see we get all this stuff and then suddenly every second we get a new random number. So all is well and good. All of our code is being executed correctly here. This is all running client side, like this on mount client side. This is both client and server. It, but what if we wanted to turn off that server side rendering functionality altogether? And that can be done. Within a neighboring page.server.ts, we could go ahead and just do export const SSR false. So what this will now do is now we will not server render any, we will not server side render anything on our page.spell. So now this truly will always execute client side and it will function basically like an SPA. This will be like an SPA page. So we go in here, we have all this stuff. So remember we had this top level, is this the browser? We have this on mount, we have this set interval. Let's go ahead and save this. And then we'll go over here and refresh. Again, is this browser, is this browser? Some random numbers, but we go back over here, it's empty. Let's try it again, we refresh it, completely empty. And what we can even do now is we can delete this set interval. We can pull it out of our on mount, set, set our interval, refresh our page, and it's not gonna explode this time. And that's because it was not being pre-rendered on the server, so there was never a pass over that page to do it on the server. So we can do it this way. Now I'd still think that semantically and realistically, you definitely wanna put this set interval within your on mount, especially for just readability concerns. Just having a, hey, this is gonna run when the page loads thing is super helpful, and that's a really great way to structure these pages I've found. React. So you definitely wanna put it within your on mount, but this is something that you can do. So that's server side rendering, rendering everything on the server, then sending it down to the client. But what about the other way around? What about client side rendering? Now let's go to our client side rendering demo. So this is a really, really basic one. If we just go back here to our home page, we go to our client side rendering demo. Let's just refresh this to clear the console. You can see in here, we have just nothing. Nothing is showing up here. And that's suspect because we have this on mount where there should be a hello popping out. And the reason why there's no hello popping out is because within this page.server.ts, I set CSR to be false. So that just means that whether or not, that just means that we're dictate, that just means that we're saying that no JavaScript is gonna be hydrated into this page. So by setting CSR to be false, this on mount will never even run. But what I can do is I can set this to be true which is the default behavior. If you don't like set this, if we just unset this, that's the same thing as setting it to be true by like this SSR page has client side rendering turned on. But if we turn it back on, now when we refresh this page, we get hello in the console because now we're gonna get JavaScript in there. This is from a practical standpoint, I don't ever really know when you would use this other than you're just really trying to ship Node.js for some reason or because realistically, if you want to static build all your pages, that's where you'd use something like static generation. Now, in this case, I can't really demo that in a dev build. So we'll do a separate video on that in the future where I dive deep into how static generation works and how you can leverage that. We leverage that at Insider Biz to great success and it keeps our server bills very, very cheap because we're just basically serving static HTML refreshed over a certain time period. So that's a super helpful thing. But for your day-to-day, -day, the key ones that you need to know about are CSR for edge cases, but really the important one is this SSR. Super important that you understand that this page.svelte it's gonna run it, there's gonna be, this is gonna be run through the server the first time. So you need to make sure that your code is set up accordingly and you need to make sure you're running things in the right places. Your fetches need to be within on mounts or within your page.server load functions or your just page.ts load or just your page.ts load functions. Either one is fine. I'd like to conclude this by shouting out the learns.svelte.dev tutorial on rendering. This is a really, really great resource to get even deeper into this than what I talked about here. I went over the basics, but if you wanna learn more and if you're gonna be doing this to a very real degree, I highly recommend you check this out. It's got stuff about everything. It's got all the information you need for basic spell kit, advanced spell kit. A lot of the weirder concepts that this framework has are explained here. So if you want to get deeper into SSR, CSR, or pre-rendering, because pre-rendering is something that we didn't touch on today, which we will in the future, I highly recommend checking this out and playing around with the demos. It's a really great way to learn, and the best way to learn this stuff is to do it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that quick little demo of me going over something I missed. I hope it was helpful. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you like, subscribe, join the Discord. We've got a link down below, and I will hopefully talk to you very, very soon.